Hi, I'm Luis, Berries and Product Manager, and today I'm going to show you how to create a hardware in the loop test system using NI Berston. In order to do that, we are creating a brand new project from scratch. Once we open Beristan, the first thing we see is the Project Explorer. It has all the sections we will need to configure our system. Now, I'm opening the System Explorer. The System Explorer helps us to make the system definition file or to configure the system definition file that will determine how our real-time test system or hardware in the loop system will run. It will have all the sections that we will configure as inputs, outputs, scales, even the models. Right now, we are importing a model, a vehicle model that will simulate the car we're going to be testing. Now, we can see all the imports and outputs inside of that model. We're also importing another model, the cruise control model. In this first stage of the testing, we're going to be testing model against model. Now, we can see how we can automatically import all the parameters. In this case, we don't need that. We have calculated channels. We need to make sure that the units we're sending to the models are what the models are expecting. So, in this case, we're changing the applied pedal position to a throttle percentage. We are multiplying by 100 the applied pedal position. So what we need to do it's to create my function, multiply it by the variable I'm going to be modifying. Now, once created, I would also like to talk about user channels. A user channel is a channel that acts like a variable, where we can modify values directly in runtime and connect them to the very stand deployed system. Right now, I'm modifying the 5 phi value to make sure the mix between gas and air is correct. Once we have all the channels created, we're going to map them. Now, from the left to the right side, we're telling Veristan what input or output is going to what input or output from the other model. Now, I've also created a file with all the inputs and outputs that need to be mapped to do it automatically. This is really useful when we're trying to import many channels. The red one is the one we already mapped. It knows it's been mapped to avoid duplicating it. Once we have all the channels mapped, we can see them all in this tool. We can see how they map the inputs to an outputs from one model to another. Once we have all of these, it is important. In this case, as I mentioned, we are running model against model. So we're going to do it in, in, in Windows. But as you saw, we have different operating systems. And we can make sure that both models that we imported will run at the same speed rate, 100 Hz. Now, we saved. And we're going to start building the GUI. Now, Veristan UI Manager is a part of Veristan that we released in 2015 SP1. And it's a graphical portion of Veristan where we can access directly the system definition. As you can see, we can drag and drop and we can add from the controls toolbar different controls and indicators to be able to communicate our GUI with our platform or our um, configured HIL system. Now, we have all the imports and all the outputs. We're going to add a Boolean button that will work to make sure our cruise control is on. We search the, the channel and we'll link it. We are also going to add 
a velocity set point controller. We're going to drag them directly from the system definition. There are many other ways to add different controls. For example, if we want to add more than one, we can select them both using Ctrl or Shift. We can right click and select what type of control or indicator we would like to add. In this case, I'm adding a chart. We can modify the chart if you don't like the way it looks as it is by selecting different toolbars. For example, in this case, what I'm going to do is to set up a fixed Y scale. We don't want it to be moving around. Also, we can change the type of the graph or the thickness of the graph. Now, we added a chart. How about an, a specific industrial indicator or controller? Let's add an speedometer and a tachometer. As you saw, I added the speedometer and the tachometer. And now what I'm going to do, it's I am going to drag the channels directly to the indicator that I just added. I just drag and drop over the indicator. Automatically gets linked from the, from the system definition to my indicator or controller to be able to visualize and start working with it. Finally, I just added a canvas. The canvas is useful to make sure you keep everything organized. You can select different controllers different controls or different indicators and group them together. Now, I'm going to deploy my HIL system, which means I'm going to be deploying the system definition file into my version engine. Now, I'm going to connect my UI manager to the already deployed system definition file. As you can see, everything is start moving. Right now it's running, but I need to fix the RPM indicator. I added 10,000 RPMs and now I can show you how this works. I started on the cruise control, I changed the velocity set point and now I see how it reacts. I move away to operate mode to avoid changing the controls by mistake. I cannot modify any control, I can just use them in this mode. As you can see, <clears throat> it's accelerating based on the set point, and I can make sure it's responding as expected. I can modify the velocity speed to see how it reacts. I can see when I go down to 50, how it starts decreasing. RPMs, the speed, everything is decreasing. Also, another thing supported in the UI manager is the multi-screen or the multi-tab. As you can see, I created another tab and without deploying it, I will start modifying, which means I can modify and add controls and indicators to my screen without undeploying my project. I just added a break force and because I didn't like the control I got, I right click and replaced it. Now, it's in Newtons. So, I'm going to add 10,000 newtons. <coughs> I break and you can see how it stopped right away. Going back, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a total percentage. Now, I'm going to add the applied pedal position import. As well, I'm going to replace it for a slide, vertical slide. And as I, as I mentioned you, as it goes from zero to one because we multiplied it by a hundred to make it the percentage. Now I'm going to show you how it reacts. So how I move it, the total percentage changes. As you can see, it changes whatever I change multiplied by a hundred. And it changes like that because of the calculated channel. Now, 
I will shut down the uh, vehicle set point and then I'm just going to copy paste control C and I can make sure if I'm going to reduce a configured control or indicator I can just move it around I add a canvas to my throttle and brake and I even can change the, the background color of the canvas now I can start playing around with it so I speed up and I see how the car reacts I can play with the brake and I can see how it responds finally I would like to show you some of the embedded tools we have in the UI manager for example we have the um, channel fault manager where we can add different faults for example we would like to make sure the code is strong enough or robust enough to support any error so I'm gonna fault my speed to 200 to see how it reacts as we can see it went all the way to 200 so it doesn't have any code it doesn't have any code to avoid going above the speed limit that it's supposed to be set up so it's something we need to figure out how to fix now I will unfold it and then I will go back I will go to the next tool I'm gonna break it and then I'm going to show you the channel manager oh that happened because I am not in the operating mode now I have my car at zero I'm going to the ch uh, channel view and then here you can see all the channels available in a table now that many channels might be overwhelming I'm gonna choose which channels I would like to see I'm picking different channels that I would like to analyze together to make sure the system is running correctly once I picked all the channels I wanted I click OK and I can see them there now I can hold them so if I hold them in a particular point of time of time even if I change them I can see they're not changing so I can analyze them with calm another important thing is I can hold them but I can export it as a text, uh, text file so if that's something weird that I would like to analyze I can save it and I can take a particular look and I can create a logging specification file the logging specification file it's a tool in which we can configure how we would like to be logging our data for example I export the channels I want to see into a logging specification file where I select if it's a TDMS I, just, I make uh, or I add a description of the file and I also can configure triggers for it for example in this case I would like to set a trigger for when the throttle goes let's say above 10 percent so I select the throttle now I have to add a particular name for this it cannot be the same channel name it's a separate set of names so uh, I can have my conditions based here so turtle above 10 and now I'll, I'll tell the file or the logging specification file that I'm going to be logging for 10 seconds once I have it I also can automate the scripting if you know an idea of them you can send all your log data to be analyzed automatically now let's go back I'll make sure to bring the car into the desired position which is zero miles an hour once I'm there I will start the locking and as you can see it's waiting for a trigger now it's logging so it's gonna log for 10 full seconds and then it will check if there's a trigger again if I kept my throttle above 10% it would automatically start triggering uh, logging sorry and now it's waiting for a trigger again now 
I can stop it if I don't want to log. Doesn't matter what happened. Finally, as I mentioned before, I'm going to deploy to show you how to make this model in the loop test system to a hardware in the loop test system. The first thing I need to do, as hardware in the loop implies hardware, right now we tested one model against the other. So I will add some hardware that will be physically connect to my ECU, which means instead of my cruise control, I'm going to be testing the actual cruise control controller. So I'm going to add a DAC board. Once I added my board, I'm going to add inputs and outputs that will be connected to the ECU. Right now, I'm adding an analog input. And then I'm adding an analog output. Each of these will represent one input or one output that right now we're getting from the model. What's the next step? We need to map those. So first, we're going to unmap the previous mapped channels. Once we unmap, we will map instead of from a controller directly to my analog input, my throttle percentage. So right now, instead of being a number or a control, it's going to be an actual voltage input to my board. And then I will map out the vehicle speed to an analog output that will communicate to my ECU to let the ECU know at what speed I might do I'm going. And then adjust the control to make sure the car is steady in the speed I ask it to be. Once I change that, I just save the file and then I deploy it. That's the only thing you gotta do. Now, I don't have an actual ECU connected right now, but that's exactly the steps you will need to do. If you would like to know more about Veristan or our hardware in the loop and real-time test platform, please visit ni.com slash Thank you.